Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Meg Turney. And late last week, eagle-eyed, pixel-loving Redditors began scratching their heads over recent gameplay videos of The Witcher 3, which didn't look quite as stunning as the initial gameplay videos the CD Projekt Red showed. They've taken issue with a whole bunch of things, decreased environmental LOG, which stands for level of detail, I looked that up. It's basically a fancy way of saying leaves and clouds. Weaker lighting systems with blurry textures, reduced effects, you name it. If this sounds familiar, you may have heard of a game called Watch Dogs. <laughs> Initially one of Ubisoft's most anticipated new IPs ever, and I don't think that's even hyperbole. No, it, it really was. was. Actually it actually really was. so anticipated. Watch Dogs came out late last year and went from the hope of awesome gaming, that is hyperbole, <laughs> to basically the worst thing ever in the blink of an eye. Also so hyperbole. hyperbole. And jinx. At issue then was the reveal trailer from the game from 2012, which showed an absolutely stunning rain-drenched Chicago groaning under the weight of all its interconnected tech technology. Mmm, picturesque. Which don't look much like the game they shipped. The game we got ended up looking flatter, more compressed, less atmospheric, just, and like just, the girl you take home from the bar when you've had too many. It's coyote ugly. Uh, <laughs> there was more than a little concern from the PC crowd in particular who have, come on, those guys have invested full paychecks into these monster machines only to end up with, well, of a crappy experience and it's one that they didn't have to have either since it turns out all those settings to make it look as nice as it did in that e3 demo were still in the code just waiting to be switched on ubisoft claims they disabled those settings for stability but a lot of people thought it had more to do with making sure the console versions didn't look bad in comparison kind of conspiracy theory but it actually makes a lot of sense i totally believe it <laughs> probably that's not what's happening here though cd project red has a pretty good history of supporting pc more likely it's just another victim of ambition and Gets that's all. more common than you think. A lot of games recently have suffered from similarly ambitious visions that, well, just didn't work well with current real-world technology. Aliens, Colonial Marines, remember that one? Based on initial impressions, that game was going to be the most impressive thing anyone had ever seen ever. Hyperbole. But then it got passed around to a bunch of studios and the final product was so disappointing, it nearly killed Aliens as a game franchise. Not quite, but almost. Dark Souls 2, which I'm actually afraid to say anything bad about because we know how much people who love it love that game, but it did suffer some pretty noticeable degradation in the graphic department throughout development, and the developers did actually acknowledge that one. They acknowledged they apologized for it, citing development complications. Part of this is probably thanks to the difference between in-engine footage and gameplay footage. Look, I harp in about that in particular a lot, but even though something is in-engine, doesn't mean that's what the game looks like. It just sounds kind of like that, which is probably why so many publishers do in-engine trailers. Engines can be capable of a lot of things if you just throw enough graphics cards and processing power at them, but that's different than real-time rendering that users are going to be getting when they're messing around with everything, trying to see how many wheels of cheese they can get rolling down a mountain at once. More like Little Engine that couldn't. Fucking barb. <laughs> InEngine also offers developers more of an opportunity to script events and nice little details because what's happening in the scene is predetermined and it may be rendered in the engine, but that doesn't even necessarily mean rendered real time. They could spend a couple days rendering that out. It was still done in the engine. You can usually spot the difference between in engine and actual gameplay pretty easily, though if you know what you're looking for. The biggest tell is the camera angle. An actual gameplay video is the camera locked to and what you'll see in the game, rendered in real time during play, and that pretty much looks like someone playing the game. Except Supercut, so it's like condensed fun. That's way more exciting. Uh, In-engine, on the other hand, well, that's a really vague term. All it means is that it uses the engine. It doesn't have to be real-time, tends to use cinematic angles, and adds all kinds of drama. It can have additional effects that are turned on that would completely glitch the game out during normal play. In short, they're more closely related to gameplay than CG trailers, but they're still not twins or even siblings. Cousins, maybe. So if you see like sweeping across and looking super cool, probably an engine. This can also be due to what's called a vertical slice, which is like a prototype for what the game might look like once it's finished. And that's actually what we see at E3 a lot. We see super polished gameplay of something that won't be out for years still. Right, there's no way that game looks that good yet. Not a full game. Exactly. They're usually missing a lot of gameplay systems that aren't needed for that part of the demo. So there are a lot of complexities the final game would have to account for that don't actually need to be accounted for in the slice. And therefore, they don't need to worry about any of that load on the system. You end up like, um, <clears throat> Chicago. So is it like a glitch you can't scratch? Nah, <laughs> I actually like that one. I was wondering where you're going with it. <laughs> so there are a lot of reasons why this kind of thing happens. But where Watch Dogs and Colonial Marines are still basically punchlines for the games industry these days, The Witcher is actually getting off 
pretty easy. A lot of folks are still holding out hope because a month or so ago, The Witcher 3 producers said they weren't actually showing off the ultra settings for PC. They said they wanted it to slap you across the face when you actually got that. But a few weeks ago, a streamer I'm Anderzel posted some ultra gameplay that does look better than a lot of the screenshots skeptics have been condemning. I just love the idea of like, slap me with those graphics, slap me harder with those graphics. That sounds <laughs> also getting off pretty easy, my mind's in the gutter. Anyway, CD Projekt Red and The Witcher also have a lot of built-up goodwill with gamers. Between the 30 hours of expansion content planned, the free DLC post-launch, the sex in the game, see their minds in the gutter too. Lots of reasons. All the banging. They've also headed off a lot of problems ahead of time by assuring gamers that they wouldn't limit to PC. So they said that whatever the platform can do, they'll optimize to that. And also, frankly, Look, even if what we see in the latest gameplay is downgraded, it's still pretty awesome. The game's out May 19th, so we'll be able to judge for ourselves next week. But what do you guys think? Do you care if it's downgraded a little bit from what we saw initially to what we see now? Do you think it even matters considering how good it looks? Do you care because the story's awesome? Shout out in the comments. You get the best in games and more here, so make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. We'll keep you in the know. And the yes. What? <laughs>